Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. I want to shout out a huge thank you to Jake for sponsoring this video and also to my other patrons. You guys are so awesome. I wore my imposter t-shirt for you. It's been so fun getting to know you through video games and our live chats. Uh, just want to say thank you very, very much for being a wonderful group of people. Today we're going to be checking out a new prog metal band. I really like prog metal because it's complex. I've just barely gotten into it, and I'm excited to get into it more. This band is called Ne Oblaviscaris, which in Latin means forget not. Now, uh, they come from Melbourne, Australia, and in the Sydney Conservatorium of Music, their composition is featured for study. It's that complex. So like, to get your very fancy degree, you have to study their music. That's awesome. In addition, I've heard that they have excellent singing, like both growl singing and clean singing. So I'm going to be looking at that a lot. Also, the name of the song is And Plague Flowers the Kaleidoscope. This is already gives me a sense of how deep this song is going to be. And Plague Flowers the Kaleidoscope. I know we're not going to be able to get to the bottom and analyze everything in the song, but let's give it a whirl. This, this initial violin solo is amazing. There's, it, it's uh, like, there are so many instances of it that sound like it should be like, like a, a violin concerto almost, but then he does things where he'll squeak or he uses like extended technique to create like a scratching or something like this, just to give it um, an extra dimension. So it ends up sounding painful as well. Uh, even the beginning, he was going back and forth between chromatics, which tend to indicate like a lot more pain and tension. Um, it was sort of fascinating. Before the guitar came in here, he was completely uh, freeform, uh, which definitely feels classical in nature. And of course, it's a violin, so it feels classical in nature. But this is a prog metal band, so I'm assuming we're about to get a lot more sound. But wow, what a start. What an intro. Totally unexpected. Let's keep going. Ooh, we need that transition. So they've set up their initial groove in, I think it's 5-4. That's the meter, the time signature. That means they've got five beats for measure. Uh, I'll count, I'll go back and count it off for you in just a bit. Uh, but that's such an interesting choice to make. It's very rare that you see bands working in different time signatures other than like something standard, like a 4-4, four, four, maybe a 12-8 or a 6-8, maybe a 3-4 every now and then, so things that might feel waltzy. But most music that's out there today is composed in 4-4, four, four. and uh, to have it in 5-4 is a very bold choice, and there must be a reason for it. You don't just choose 5-4 like, by like picking something out of a hat. Usually, if somebody's going to pick 5-4, they're looking to have something that feels jarring in some way. So if I think about like the title of this song and a plague flowers flowers the kaleidoscope then I think like yeah and it's so all green in the background as well I feel like maybe the like crying of the violin maybe that is going with this very disjunct 5-4 that's kind of feeling like it has like an extra misplaced beat in it 
Uh, let's go back and I'll show you how this 5-4, where it starts and how you feel it. So I, I didn't catch it actually until the drum started, but the guitar player is already playing it here. Here, this is where it becomes clearer. Two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, down beat, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> um, the drummer is doing so much already. I have a feeling he's going to be blowing my mind here really soon. To get your band already into a like steady groove of 5-4 and not make it feel like uh, you're slightly off kilter with each other is already a little difficult. They all feel really smooth in this time signature. And uh, he looks like he's like running. Like I... I I mean, wow, how does he do so many things at the same time? I've always wondered this about drummers. I can play piano, I can sing at the same time, so I guess there's 10 fingers, and sometimes you can even use two feet. Um, but I, I feel very impressed. I hear so many different kinds of sounds coming from the drum kits. I've become recently more and more obsessed with drums as I've gotten into more tool. So I'm, I'm really curious to see where else he goes, but I'm already uh, very impressed by how it almost seems like he's like running a marathon while playing with his hands. Oh, it looks like we might be about to get some vocals here. Uh, so far, just one comment on, it looks like their lead vocalist, uh, his name starts with an X, but I don't remember it exactly right now. I think the violinist's name is Tim. Um, uh, I was really, I was kind of wondering what he was doing. He was definitely doing a little bit of head banging, but I was interested in the way that he was like relaxing and getting into the song initially. Also, he has beautiful, beautiful locks, gorgeous hair. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's getting ready to sing. Nope, they're all getting ready to headbang. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is a, a group uh, tradition. This must be done before we can start singing. Um, also, they switched the time signatures again. I didn't catch exactly when it happened. I think it happened when the head banging started, but I'm not sure. Um, and it sounds like they're in a 12 8 right now. So I had this like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 happening underneath. Let's see if it was indeed when they started head banging. <laughs>
difficult to play guitar while you're headbanging or bass or any of those instruments? Like, I imagine you're moving the instrument with you as you go some, but I have no idea. I haven't ever tried that. I know that you can be really, headbanging can actually be like kind of relaxing for singers. I read a little bit more about that. Thank you. Uh, you guys sent me some awesome information about headbanging. Um, but if you're doing it in the right way, it can be like really loosening actually. Um, but I wonder how that affects their playing. I'm feeling impressed that they can still keep going right now. I was like, hey, pretty voice. And I was like, oh my goodness, who's screaming? And uh, and also with the hair over his face, screaming guy, he reminds me of the girl from The Ring. I don't watch many horror movies, just so you know. I just can't. I get nightmares. I might have a nightmare now. Uh, he looks like that girl with the hair over his face now. And he kind of sounds like what I think she would sound like if she were screaming. Uh, Tim, violinist, uh, can, can sustain a note for a very long time that's right on pitch. Uh, the two of them together was almost too much to take in. Let's take it in a little bit more. <laughs> FYI, the screaming that he's doing is is hard. It's difficult. He's using his false chords for sure in this um, with that kind of sustaining power. Uh, that's like, and with the different pitches that he's even able to control that at and being able to keep that sound going for so long, that's not easy. That's not something you just roll out of bed and do. That's something you practice for years and years to do. So uh, don't think that this person who's screaming on stage is like just like kind of an amateur. No, 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 no. He's quite, quite good at it. Uh, also, I really loved like the, the, what's it called? That like when you are um, on the kick and you're like double tapping or something, whatever it was, the way that that started up behind the two vocalists at the same time made it even more intense. That was a really, really cool bit of energy to ride. Wow, it's like yin and yang. Seriously, I feel like like maybe you have plague and flowers. Uh, this this <laughs> this um, this contrast is quite shocking. I. <laughs> Wow. Uh, 
another thing that I just really enjoy about prog metal is that they feature all of their musicians. And um, I, that was an awesome solo to hear. Well, I should say spotlight to hear here. Um, wow. Ah, and he has uh, extended strings in his guitar. I don't know that much about guitar personally, um, but I can appreciate it as I would appreciate another instrument in the orchestra. Um, and it's just, it's really insane to see how talented he is, how quickly he can move. Um, and it's also insane to hear how fast this drummer is continuing to go in the background, but it isn't just, um, it isn't monotonous. He's putting, he's peppering in all kinds of different layers of percussion. And I think I even heard some cowbell in there at some point, or maybe it was a different kind of bell, but I thought I heard some cowbell. Um, and I was just thinking, man, he's got to be sweating so much at this point. He's like, not just running a marathon, he's like sprinting, really just going as fast as he can through it. Oof, wow. Yay, audience Thank involvement. You guys so much. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> oh, oh, I should mention, um, this song happened in their set after they'd already been performing for an hour. That's some crazy endurance. To still be able to play all of these instruments this well, I would think you would be exhausted, but they're still going super strong. Ooh, back a little bit. Fingers go! Yeah, that's good. I I wish I knew a little more intricacies of screaming. I know some. I don't know tons and tons and tons. Uh, but I do. I'm really impressed by the different kind of ranges he can scream in, in addition to how long he can scream for. Like that also takes a lot of breath control. And he's got to stay open here the whole time or he will wreck his voice. So it's really, really cool to hear... Um, this level of screaming in here, uh, I think that's fascinating. Even though I, as an opera singer, I, that's never something that opera singers train in, but I definitely, definitely appreciate the enormous amount of practice this person has put into it. Listen to the way, I'm gonna go back just a bit, listen to like the different pitches of his scream here. They're not like sung pitches, but it's almost like the pitches of a sibilance. Oh, go back just a bit. Kind of low mids now. He's sweating so much. He totally looks like I did after I uh, sang at the Queen Elizabeth competition. Uh, I was sweating so much by the time I got to March and Uh Yeah, when you are working that hard, you sweat that much. And then you have close-ups at a camera and it remembers it forever. And you're just like, okay, cool. People know I worked hard. So good job.
Wait, do you scream too? Oh, no, that's him. Okay. goodness he's about to go even faster i still can't stop seeing the girl from the ring so that's still very present in my mind um <laughs> just super scary okay just so you know it's super scary i'm loving the uh there's a really good feeling between uh band members right now it seems like especially uh the two guys who've sung they just they have a great vibe between them so that's awesome to see uh, I, again, I love that we're seeing not just singers up front and center. We're getting a lot of focus on this drummer, a lot of focus on the other instruments too. So fast. Ugh. They've been going back a ton still between like a feeling of a four on the bottom and an eight on the bottom. It just switched for a moment to have that one, two, three, one, two, three. This drummer is so good and mixing that up. So basically they're going between like, uh, like a simple and uh, uh, compound rhythm. So uh, if you know what those type terms are, check them out uh, and listen for this like really elegant, smooth switch between like a feeling of a subdivision of two and a subdivision of three. It's, it's uh, happening everywhere in here. That's a beautiful baseline. Never flick in your eyes because I know if I turn really quickly the hair often will smack me in my eyes but I see that it doesn't look like they have their eyes closed all the time so uh, those of you with head banging experience like lots of experience I've done this a few times and I haven't noticed the difference yet um, tell me like what happens when your hair does come back and smack your face do you close your eyes do you enjoy the pain like what do you do with that hair just curious His vocals actually, they make me a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, totally admitting it up front. Hey, uh, I can admire it, but I, I kind of wonder if it's supposed to make you uncomfortable. I feel like that might be the appropriate reaction, but I'm kind of starting to giggle over here because I'm just like, oh man, yeah, that, that grates on me a teeny bit, <laughs> but all power to him.
Disney Plus. Oh, Hulu come on. ESPN Plus. Team Up. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Epic Stories. The largest streaming TV library. Sorry about that, guys. There's an ad in the middle of that that I couldn't dodge ahead of time. Sorry about that, guys. There was an ad there that I couldn't dodge ahead of time, but I'm very happy that this band is monetizing because they deserve all of the income. Okay, this is uh, two things to say before we do a quick wrap of this. Um, first of all, I remember reading something about Jesus and Satan, and I totally see that. Uh, Tim kind of has a little Jesus vibe going on. He's so happy all the time. He's like, yeah, playing my violin. I'm, I'm doing sweet here. And he had the clean vocals. And then a uh, dude whose name starts with an X, Sinador maybe? Uh, wow. With the hair over all the time, definitely had that dark vibe going on. Uh, I, I think that's a hilarious comparison and contrast. Um, also, is the drummer seat buckled in? He has like a, a thing that looks like it might be helping him stay in place. I wonder if this is because he's just putting so much pressure on the drums as he needs something to just like help keep him in his seat. I'm curious. It looks like he might be standing now. Um, but anyhow, if you guys know what that thing is that's keeping him in place, please write that in the comments below. That blew me away. Like, I feel like I'm still like this combo of really warm but shivering from the sound of those two vocals together. Like, I think that it was their intention to have that abrasiveness in there. Um, it's one of the first times I think I've generally disliked the sound of a vocal but been in awe of it at the same time and appreciative of it. It's kind of awesome. Um, so I guess I didn't mean, that means I didn't dislike it. I don't know. I'm, I'm fascinated by it now. Uh, but then to have the clean sign uh, behind it. Yeah. You know, when I start screwing up my words that I'm really excited and impressed by what happened. And the drummer too. I think he just killed it. I love the amount of energy and different textures he was continuously bringing. It was great to hear all of that. Um, and at the same time, the instrumentalists, obviously, they were all so very adept in different time signatures. I felt that they were very, very smooth in that. Uh, and obviously all virtuosic in their own right. I loved getting to see all of them in the spotlight at one time or another. Thank you so much for this recommendation. It was really eye-opening. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it so much. Please keep making recommendations down below in the comment section of this video. Please uh, join me as well on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays at 8 o'clock Arizona time. I premiere videos at that time and I have a chat room through YouTube that we're all in. And also, uh, if you want to get to know each other better or also talk about really crazy music like this, you should come and join me in the Patreon. So I'll hope to see you somewhere soon. Thanks.